You know, it says in Romans 14 that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. But it's not always joy. I raise my kids on a mantra. It's up on the screen. Life is all about choices. Choices have consequences. So make good choices. Why did I drum that into my kids? Because I wanted them to experience life. I wanted them to have joy and peace and rest. I didn't want them making choices that would leave a trail of guilt and shame and loss. The same is true for you and I as adults. See, that mantra is not just for kids. Every one of us in this room is confronted daily in a moment-by-moment basis with the need to make good choices and avoid bad choices. We were all placed into this predicament by, of course, Adam, who made a very, very bad choice. He could have chosen God. Instead, he chose the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He could have done what God said. Instead, he chose to do what Satan said. He could have believed God, you shall surely die. Instead, he chose to believe Satan, you shall surely not die. And that terrible choice, my friends, had very horrible consequences. It says in Romans chapter 5 that death spread to all men. Personalize it. Death spread to you and I. The world under a curse, every one of us experiences things now we were never designed to experience. Having left our state of innocence, we're now confronted daily with this potential to make a wrong choice that will lead us to experience harmful consequence. Scripture's filled with people who've done this. Cain murdered his brother, terrible choice. Suffered being cursed from the earth. Hagar gave her handmaid to Abram and caused family division and national division. We've got that today, Arab and Jew, to this day because of that choice. Noah chose to get drunk and caused his sons to be judged and disciplined. And of course, David chose to have an affair with Bathsheba. It brought chaos not only to his family, but to the entire nation. Galatians 6 says, whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. Sow to the flesh, you'll reap corruption. Sow to the spirit, you'll reap life everlasting. Now what I want to share with you today is this, and it is glory. That is not a universal law. And the reason it's not a universal law is because there is a God. A God who has revealed a phrase in his New Testament that says, but God. In Ephesians chapter 2 it says, even though we were dead in our trespasses and sins, and by nature children of wrath, but God, (laughs) who is rich in his mercy and his great love with which he loved us, saved us, from our sins. God proclaimed his name to Moses in Exodus 34 when Moses said, what is your name? And look at that name. I put it up on the screen for you. God says, my name is God, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. That's a whale of a name, isn't it? This gracious, forgiving, merciful God, my friends, will overrule the bad choice that can bring bad consequences. I think of Jacob. He made a choice to wrestle God. That's not a good choice. Ended up with a limp for the rest of his life, but he also ended up with a changed life. I think of David with his sin with Bathsheba. Horrible consequence. But that union later brought a great gift named Solomon, who brought great wonder and mercy to the world because God is who he is 